way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets. A reason why I decided it's absolutely crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika. Good morning. Good morning. And it's crucial that we we through the noise and get to the meat of discussion. Did you know that I came across uh, an internal study that the company Meta conducts every year mm-hmm. on which posts get the most likes and travels the furthest? And uh, surprise, the most useless information gets the most likes and the popularity is unrivaled. So it's not current affairs. It's a really cruel joke that apparently got the most likes last year. It's a mystery. (laughs) The human mind? Yeah. (laughs) The human psyche Uh and why we're attracted to gossip and possibly the worst jokes out there. But there you have it. So, Do you think the reason is because we're just like bombarded by so much that is happening everywhere in the world? Yes. Uh, Politics, climate change. Yes. Natural disasters. Yes. That uh, we just want to, I don't know, we just want to look at something that is lighthearted and And silly. Silly. and, uh, on social media sometimes even divisive yep. I, I do think too much information is not necessarily a good thing mm-hmm. um, well that is why we created the segment after all isn't it it's because there is a lot happening yeah. and uh, to keep every topic sexy and, and engaging is tough you know um, you know being surrounded by students they're teenagers at school I, I worry often about um, you know whether they will be able to screen uh, the real news from the fake news we often talk about uh, media literacy with mm. the students and uh um, it, it, it's really it, it's really tricky. It's challenging, yeah. isn't it? Um, I, I remember thinking, yeah, we need, we need media literacy mm-hmm. classes in school. Yep. And then I got thinking, uh, where would I start with that curriculum? Where, <laughs> w- where do we begin? Yeah. Let's begin here. Yes, <laughs> let's. <laughs> All right. So our first social media minute topic, uh, <laughs> confusion and panic over a malfunction of antivirus software that has over 16 million users. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of panic yeah. yesterday uh, when an internal system patch error of East Security's antivirus software, Ayak, uh, you know, basically malfunctioned. Yeah, yeah it malfunctioned yesterday. The and antivirus uh, software yeah, malfunctioned. Exactly. The software was developed for Microsoft Windows computers. Like you said, it has nearly 16 million users. And simply put, this antivirus software Uh, recognized perfectly normal, healthy software (laughs) as ransomware. Yeah. And uh, it sent its users a series of pop-up messages alerting them of a suspected ransomware attack, followed by a message that it had successfully blocked the ransomware. Now, what happened was the users soon discovered that they were unable to access or use some of the software programs they needed to use for work, Ah. uh, which were on their computers. And uh, when they tried to reboot their computers, update the software and reboot their computers, they discovered that they were stuck in an infinite reboot loop. Something about that makes me feel even more uneasy. An infinite reboot, infinite anything. You just keep rebooting. Okay, so apparently work on a Tuesday was disrupted at large by a not-so-trustworthy antivirus Mm -hmm. software system. And and of course, needless to say, people were upset. (laughs) And and they took it to social media to file complaints. Reading all the the complaints that were posted online, uh, people were in the middle of uh, finishing, meeting a deadline. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And someone posted, well, this has just cost me millions of dollars. (sighs) You know, and uh, yeah, but then other users jumped to the rescue okay. saying, you know, I use this method and I was able to reboot my computer, do this and you'll be able to remove this antivirus software from your computer. So people were complaining and at the same time helping each other. Being helpful. Yes. See, depending on uh, whose hands it lies in, uh, social media could be used for good. See, yes. uh, but it's funny because if you have a common enemy, it unites people. Yeah. Too. <laughs> so one good thing, I guess, is that it was uh, this this malfunction was caused by an internal error. It okay. was not caused by some sort of out, outer external attack. So no one was hacking yes, the system. Yes, exactly. And eSecurity recognized a problem very quickly okay. and issued an apology um, and say it, it said that it won't damage the user's computers. Uh, at the same time, they shared a manual on its official website on how users can recover Windows on their computers. Usually a timely response yeah. eases us, the customers. So yes. this was probably the best they could do. The thing is 
because they they shared this manual on their website, but many, many users could not access this website because they were also running on their own <laughs> antivirus software. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so that's kind of a missed memo. <laughs> yeah, I know. So what other options do they have? Call people? Landlines? Anyone? Yeah. Oh, dear. This is the world we live in. This is why we're exhausted, Erica. Yes. I mean, this exhausts me mm-hmm. a lot. I, I do wonder if my computer fails me during a live show. <gasps> what do I do? That would be a nightmare. I would just oh. say song break, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. On to our second buzzword of the day. Now, this has everyone's attention because it raises questions about, well, is it hygienic to do this? Is it the right time? Mm-hmm. However, climate crisis and the issues surrounding it, we can't delay it any further. So right. Is beginning trial of multi-use containers for a particular food delivery well, app. Yes, and it started uh, its trial run already this Monday. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this means that computer uh, consumers are now going to be able to select restaurants that provide these multi-use containers Wouldn't for it food be funny deliveries. If the computer decides for me, <laughs> <laughs> now there—that's a clever way to hack environmentalists out there. Okay, so you have the option now to use yeah. the multi-use containers right. as opposed to single-use yes. plastic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, So how does the service exactly work? Because for I understand, it's a pilot for the time being. Yep, that's right. Now, once the order is made, the food is going to be delivered in a multi-use container and a bag uh, that keeps the food and the containers warm. Um, And after uh, after they've done eating, the users can uh, put the containers back inside these bags and leave them out on the doorstep. And uh, there's a QR code printed on the outside of this bag, which they can uh, scan. And uh, they can ask the, the company that picks up the empty containers to pick up their, you know, the, the empty boxes. So it's the new and improved 2022 version yeah. of uh, Jajangmyeon Bowls. Yes. <laughs> if you live through that era. <laughs> we used to do that, right? Call up a local restaurant and say, hey, I'm done with this takeout. Can you take back the yes. plates? Yes. It's that, but with QR codes. That's right. You know, there are no extra deposits or charges for using these multi-use containers, really? which is the best part for the consumers. Now, uh, the city worked with an online food delivery app from October of last year to this January to trial the multi-use container service in the Gangnam-gu district. We briefly mentioned this so. on this segment before. And in April, the city signed an agreement with four delivery platforms to expand the service across the city mm. and uh, developed uh, this ordering system. Okay, so there's something in it for the customers. Yeah. Now, if it costs us more, now that might be a tough one uh, mm-hmm. given, I don't know, inflation and tough time. So how has a response been that we don't have to pay extra? Yeah, so during the trial period, orders for multi-use containers jumped by more than 30 percent each week. Uh, In January, the use of multi-use containers jumped by 478 percent since the initial stages of the project last October, uh, reaching around 67,000 orders. Now, Seoul launched a commercial service in Gangnam-gu district, aiming for expansion to Gwanak-gu district in September and both Gwangjin and Seodaemun-gu districts in October. This is this year, actually. Now, after the trial run yesterday, um, consumers said, you know what? I love this. I love this. Well, number one reason, well, one of the reasons was uh, a lot of people commented how they felt a little bit icky when they received like hot food in plastic containers. Oh. You know, they're like, oh, I'm not sure whether this is good for my body. You know, Is it healthy to yes. put hot food? Although it's the plastic container would say it's safe for microwave That's views, right. but yeah. it raises questions about are we absolutely sure? Yeah. Right? And uh, another thing they mentioned yeah. is yeah. that it's so convenient because they don't have to rinse the empty plastic containers. Oh to throw them away to recycle them and all they have to do is simply close the lids put it back in their bags and then just leave it outside their door and the company will come and pick them up I just assumed that it would be the nice thing for me to just clean the dishes and Mm -hmm. put it in the bag but apparently I can just eat it after I'm done with the food oh that's absolutely convenient see this is realistic because you have to think about the psyche behind why we order so much Mm -hmm. delivery food it's convenient and you ask me to do a little bit more a customer might be inclined to say no yeah and many of the office workers come commented how, you know, when they have food delivered to the office, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 you know, it gets, it's a hassle yeah. it, and it gets messy, you know, it all does. those plastic containers that they have to rinse yeah. and then they throw away. Yeah. But now all they have to do is uh, eat and then, you know, 
place them in a bag very nicely, neatly, and then place them outside the door. <laughs> and somebody will come pick them up. Uh, it's outsourced from what I understand. Yeah. If yes. this works, I think it's it's the it's a greener future for delivery because yep. I, I clearly have acclimated to the delivery lifestyle and I can't live without it. Mm-hmm. I like this option. But there are two sides of the coin always. Yes. But uh, because restaurants are saying, oh, it's actually quite costly. Uh, for to, the restaurants. For the restaurants and for popular restaurants where they get tons of orders every day, this makes sense, right? Yeah. In the long run. But yeah. for, for restaurants who only get a few orders every mm-hmm. day, mm-hmm. it's just extra money they will have to spend. That might be tricky. Yeah. So not all restaurants, mm-hmm. I mean, it is a for-profit company, right? right. Can uh, join this program. Mm-hmm. But for the time being, I like that I have option as a customer, but maybe there are some kinks to work yes. out. Finally, on to our last buzzword of the day. The government is banning the use of thunder sticks at <laughs> sports <laughs> facilities. <laughs> yeah. So we're staying in line with, uh, you know... Go green. Go green, exactly. So thunder sticks are basically inflated plastic batons <laughs> that people use uh, to cheer for their teams at major sporting events, even political rallies <laughs> in some places. And, uh, you know, these batons are used as promotional items often for sports teams, and uh, they're routinely handed out at sporting stadiums, mm. and uh, they're often sold at gift shops as well for mm. sports fans. Mm. Now, these inflatable cheering sticks and plastic blankets will be banned from use at sports facilities here in South Korea following the prohibition of cheering equipment made with synthetic resins. Okay, so you get it, right? Yeah. I mean, they're fun, and there's, there's a, kind of a big part of this sort of like cheering culture, yeah. so they might have to replace it with something that's a little bit more, I don't know, durable, yes. sustainable. Yeah, I guess, but uh, I don't know. When you get rid of one thing, you will have to look for, well, what's going to replace? Substitute. Yes, substitute. If the substitute uses just as much plastic, yeah. that's a little bit more sustainable. That's right. How do you get everyone to not buy it each time they return <laughs> yeah. to the venue itself? You know, recently the Ministry of Environment posted the new guidelines on its official website mm. uh, explaining these new rules um, and uh, it will take, these new rules will take effect on November 24th. A little bit of a grace period yes. there. Yes. But eventually they just want to phase it out. Mm-hmm. And there's more actually. Uh, the new rules also ban the use of disposable paper cups, mm. plastic straws, and plastic sticks at cafeterias and uh, restaurants mm-hmm. and uh, plastic sticks by I mean I, I think they're referring to the, the coffee the toothpicks oh yeah the stirrers yeah the stirrers okay. exactly and uh, they also prohibit the use of disposable shopping bags and <sighs> convenience stores and uh, confectionaries just like at large malls okay yeah. so there you go in an effort to go green as some things are being phased out now I always assumed that the thunder sticks was a strictly Korean thing it really isn't it has a pretty long history yeah in it sports started arenas. in the U S yeah. actually. In 1992, you know? when the Anaheim Angels distributed hundreds of thunder sticks during the playoffs. Look at that. Yep. And it was supposed to be kind of like a one time event yep. for the fans. Mm-hmm. It stuck. Yeah, for and decades. it spread <laughs> <laughs> to South Korea. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. And in our efforts to go green, those are the latest, well, headlines. Yep. We got to do the mm-hmm. effort. Thank you very much, Erica. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.